our weekly updates about AI. So first, uh, I want to talk about the idea of stochastic parrot. So this term was coined uh, three years ago by Emily Bender, uh, who is a linguist, but she also works with uh, computer language models. And there was a publication on the dangers of stochastic parrots. So you can download this uh, PDF. And uh, yeah, so it's a, me a metaphor for, uh, to describe the theory that LLMs, though able to generate plausible language, do not understand the meaning of the language. Uh, okay, so LLM answers questions by statistical parroting. It simply predicts the most probable answer from its training data, token by token, right? A model is a compressed version of training data. So you can think about uh, all the text on the internet. Uh, then you create a subset of this uh, text, like a good representation. So this is kind of compression. And then you create a model which is also a compression of, of this text. And that's all the LLM does. It just predicts statistically the most probable uh, answer from the text uh, which it learned from. So when we think about chain of thought, so once LLM gives you the first answer, you can ask it to comment on this answer, to evaluate this answer, to reflect on this answer. And uh, it will answer the question using, again, statistical parroting. So for example, in your training data, there were discussions of some topics and it will parrot those texts of those discussions. So LLM doesn't do reasoning, it mimics reasoning by mimicking reasoning text in its training data. And LLM always gives you not a correct answer, but generates the most common answer. It converges to the mean, it will happily give you the most common misconception, it does not understand. So this is, uh, I mean, we've seen it uh, many times, but what's interesting this month is October 7th. Uh, this is an article from Apple. So it's a new paper and they actually researched it. So they try to understand if the model can think. And the answer is no, it cannot think. So what they were doing, uh, they were taking a, a standard test like with uh, questions and then they were changing it a little bit. So for example, it was a mathematical question where like John had three apples. So they would cha change John to Jim and three apples to five apples and do small changes like that. And the uh, ability of the model to answer the questions were dropping dramatically from like 85% to like 40%, whatever. So which shows that the model do not understand the meaning of the question. They just find the closest answers from the training data. And yeah, this was like really, really <laughs> bad. Anyway, uh, NVIDIA Lama 3 Nematron 70 B Instruct uh, for Hugging Face. So what is it? Uh, so NVIDIA started with Lama 3.1 created their own version and use the, their own training techniques. They provide this model on the build and video com website. So you cannot like download and run it yourself and it's not open source. Although underlying Llama 3.1 is open source, but uh, Nematron 70B is not. Uh, but the point they're trying to make is, okay, this model is only 70 billion parameters. So you can run it on your laptop. Uh, well, if it's a good laptop, but at the same time, it's on par with GPT-40 and Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is quite amazing. So good. Uh, hopefully these models will become uh, available open source soon. Um, another model, Zamba 27B. Well, this one is open source. It's Apache 2.0. It is a hybrid model. So it uses transformer and it uses Mamba 2 blocks. So this is kind of the architecture all in one network. It outperforms Mistral, it outperforms uh, Google Gemma and Metas Lama 3. It's a small model, 7 billion parameters. So the authors wrote, we believe Zamba 27B is the leading model for running on device and on consumer GPUs. So here's some uh, links for uh, Zifra website uh, we, uh, from the uh, Hugging Face. And uh, yeah, and, and the way to run it in Python, you're using uh, some modules and uh, run it. Okay, so it's not on, uh, unfortunately, on Alama yet. 
and another model, uh, Ministral from Mistral. So uh, Mistral has, uh, uh, well, Mistral 7B, uh, like it was introduced last September, like a year ago, and then they had other variations of it. Uh, there is a uh, Ministral, so Ministral is 8B and 3B, so it's a small model and it's not open source. It has a research license, it's not on a llama. It is small and it is a little bit better than Mistral. Look at, for example, MMLU 65 versus 62.5. Well, look at all of them. It Across the board, it's a little bit better than Mistral. And uh, yeah, but again, it, it's, it's not open source yet. Uh, OpenAI Swarm. So this is on GitHub. And this is an educational framework uh, to explore ergonomic, lightweight, multi-agent orchestration. It is uh, kind of like a cookbook, like how to do things. It's experimental, but it, it's definitely interesting project. And it's coming from uh, OpenAI. So you, 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 can, you can see this. Okay, uh, next, uh, Matt Mumber. This is open source sequence processing based on Mamba 2. Uh, just a, rem a reminder, Mamba, Mamba 2 uh, is an architecture for large language model for sequence processing, which is not transformer based. And because of that, it doesn't have this quadratic complexity uh, and uh, because it, it, it doesn't build attention matrices, which, which are qu quadratic. So it, ca it is very good at processing sequences and uh, long sequences. So this is yet, yet another approach and it is on GitHub. Uh, O1 a replication journey, strategic progress report. So these people are trying to, uh, to build a model which successfully integrates search and learning in mathematical reasoning. So trial and error, correction, backtracking and reflection. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting idea. If, if you have information on the internet that two plus two equal five, uh, can you actually through reasoning figure out that two plus two equal four and how you would go about it and so on. So yeah, this, this is very interesting. Uh, you, you can go to GitHub and uh, research this project. Very, very interesting. So next is, uh, well, Tesla. Uh, there was a Tesla event I spoke about last week and uh, they uh, also were demonstrating uh, their Optimus, which is also called Tesla bot. And there are videos you can watch on YouTube uh, how this uh, robot uh, moves, goes around. So it can walk and navigate complex environment, including stairs, uneven terrain, locate and char uh, charging stations by himself. It can uh, grasp and manipulate objects with its hands, picking, carrying boxes, watering plants. Uh, interact safely with humans, uh, voice commands and gestures, although I haven't seen demonstrations of that yet. Uh, it can learn from experience, custom designed actuators and sensors, uh, self-driving computer, battery packs, uh, their own software coming from Tesla. So Tesla becomes more and more not a car company, but a robotics company. And um, so Optimus is under development, but the goal is to mass produce it. So every family would have those robots and they can be used in uh, like uh, hazardous or tedious tasks, but also home tasks like cooking, cleaning and be a companion at home. Uh, text to video. Well, I didn't do this slide. Uh, the idea is I'm thinking to start generating YouTube videos and uh, there are a lot of tools which allow you to do it so uh, leave it for next time okay crowdsourced uh, arena leaderboard so latest update was uh, four days ago so i changed the marking a little bit so you see uh, twitter i mean xai uh, like elon musk so you have grok here and here you will see a lot of models from china right but mostly they are not uh, open source right and uh, then the green ones are open source and on the top of course is meta so there are four or five uh, billion parameter models and 70 billion parameter models so this is for english uh, only queries and this this is for coding and again uh, you see some china models perform very well 
Quint 2 is uh, open source, I believe, and so this is from China, from Alibaba, and also Yi models. Okay, uh, next is uh, about layoffs. So I, I don't understand it. On one side, they report that uh, there's very few layoffs, right, in comparison to, to last year. On the other side, as I told in the beginning, um, job market for IT much worse than before COVID several years ago. IT has become a commodity, so rates went down, the salaries rates went down at least 25%, much more competition, hundreds of applications for each position, a lot of uh, remote workers, of course. Um, so yeah, I don't know, it's getting tougher. Okay, this is me and thank you.